Christ on all, welcome back. Um, hope you all enjoyed those lovely cakes and sandwiches and jam and cream and all those nice things on your tables. You may be still eating, ladies and gentlemen. I can't say I blame you. Enjoy them. I've been up all night cooking. I can give you the recipe after the show. Thanks also to the Cambria String Quartet, Jochen Bauerian, for entertaining us. Give them a round of applause. Well, in the in Agosai at Gobruyo, I've been Gobitha Bochi, see the unnamed wrong Dervanoni, where he got him when Hayek preed, Kakene, Gatia, but a nerve, then with your faith, your normal Arnochi. In the fortis young head, he got Kumni, Guesta, Yerbeni, Gavidan, and helping me, he Roy Asan, a Gabluinor, Tlase, Harthma, Setioli, Vera Suiva. I'm a Gadani, he were Anka Davis, a Guinidog plant, Pobol Heen, a Gova Kamri Thassol, a Domachi, he were Guabre Kantahi, Verundias, a Vasi Shubohi, a Guedes, a Hononi, and Edgman at Glowedam, a Prosecte, Arderhog, and Imini one son, and Danino, Sidi Karad, Rond Dervanol, a Hurta Rayor Bobol, Sing of Rival, and Danino. Presser Hevid, he the way Botani, a Audir, a Sharadur, Bead, Enwog. Richard McCann, good day. I'm Richard Astori Revedol. I'm glad to Richard and then Hannah Chni Nesemlan. But you're also going to see how many Hugh he ranked Davis. Richard McCann, do you know where I'm? And we'll hear more from them shortly. Well. The accolades started way back in 2005, and they've become a very, very important tradition. And the award ceremony is a much anticipated date in the diary. There have been, well, enormous interest in taking part from the very, very beginning. And this year, that interest has again reached a new level. And I'm pleased to say there was a record number of entries received um, this year. So that's great news. Well done, all of you. And to get here, all the submissions have had to impress the judging panel, and that's no mean feat. Um, the standards were high, and as the judges set very, very high standards, uh, is it, of course, appropriate for public services um, that are among the most important we have in Wales. So those standards were really, really high, so you had to work very hard to get here today. Well, as I've already explained, I, I come from the world of broadcasting, television, and radio, and some of you may think that's I don't know, quite a glamorous world, perhaps. Social work, social care, early years and childcare, they're not always seen to be at the front of the queue, let's put it that way, in the glamour stakes. Um, so our own, in our own small way, we're gonna try and redress the balance today, uh, putting all your hard work well and truly in the spotlight, okay? Um, to the tens of thousands of people in Wales who receive some form of care and support every day, every hour, every minute, and those using early years and childcare services, all of you working in this business, you're all stars. And just as big, if not bigger, than any of those faces and voices that you hear on TV, radio, or cinema screens, okay? So before you go any further with today's ceremony, do you know what, give yourselves a round of applause. Oh, louder than that. <laughs> you deserve it. Well, when I stood on this same stage uh, back in, was it 2015? Yeah, quite a few years ago, 2015, the 10th anniversary awards, the man who was chair of the care council at that time, well, he pledged that the accolades would continue um, after the change to Social Care Wales. And, uh, well, he was good to his word because here we are again. So now to launch a new era of the accolades, here is Arwell Ellis Owen OBE, who is now Chair of Social Care Wales and Chair of the Accolades Judging Panel. Vasily, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Arwell Ellis Owen. Hyfryd eich gwelchu yma i gyd ac yn amlwg o'r gwenebau a'r gwenu sy'n yna bod chi wedi fwynhau y wledd. Dyma fel o gari'n deud y seremoni o brio cyntaf 
ers i gofal cymdeithasol Cymru gael ei sefydlu, a hefyd i Gymru iachach gael ei gyhoeddi i'r ha yma. Ac mae disgwyl nawr i'r sector yma nid yn unig gydweithio yn wahanol, ond hefyd cyflawni pethau gwahanol. Ac mae'r aclid yma yn sbardyn, yn enghraifft syml iawn a geto effeithiol. O be mae'r chwildro yma pawb yn sôn amdano sy'n digwydd yma i siechyd a gofal. Ac da chi yn rhan anhebgor o'r chwildro hwnna. Mae yna brojecta pnawma sydd yn llawn heiddi cael ei datblygu ymhellach. Fel bod syniadau lleol, ych brwt y brydedd chi, a'r gofal gwell sy'n deillio o'r modela newydd da ni'n diglwyd amdano nhw heddiw yn cael ei gwobrio, ond hefyd ei bod nhw chi, ei nillwyr, a'r rhai sy'n wedi cyrraedd yr hester fer yn cael llwyfan cynedlaethol i ysbrydoli eraill, i ddilyn eich patrymau chi ac i ddatblygu gofal a sicrhau bod pobl, lle bynnag maen nhw'n byw, yn cael y gofal gorau sydd ar gael. Dan i gyd yn wynebau heriau, gan gynnwys y galw di gynsail am ofal a chymorth yn ystod y degawd nesaf. Mae hyn yn golygu yn bod yn arbennig o bwysig i ydangos o'r holl bethau gwych sy'n cael ei gwneud bob dydd mewn gofal cymdeithasol, blynyddoedd cynnar a gofal plant. Ac nid yn unig i ynrannu y marfel rhagorol yn hefyd i godi proffail y gweithlu yma. A drwy'n wneud hynny, y gobaith ydy, y bydd yn ei yndenu mwy o bobl dda i weithio mewn proffesiwn sydd ddim wastad fel oedd Gary'n awgrymu yn derbyn y clod y mae o'n heiddi. Nawr, mae gofal cymdeithasol Cymru wedi cael ei sefydlu. Ond ta waith am bab bynnag newidiadau a welwn ni mewn deddwriaeth, sefydliadau, strategaethau a chynlluniau, mae un peth ddim yn newid. A hynny ydy y chymrwymiad anhygol chi, bobl gyffredin, i gynnig y gwasanaeth gorau sy ar gael i'r bobl hynny y can mil a hanner o filio sy'n dibynnu yna ni bob dydd o'r blwyddyn. Dim dibynnu yna fi, dibynnu yna chi bob dydd o'r blwyddyn. Ac fel cydeirydd y panel beirniadu, dwi hi'n ffodus iawn i fod ydy gweld, darllen a clywed am bob un o'r ymgeiswyr gan y beirniad. A tro hwn, roedd brydedd y beirniad wrth nod yn ôl i ddweud wrth â i ar panel be oedd yn hwn feddwl yn cael ei heiddi i gael ei rhestr fer. Oedd hwnnw yn anhygol, a mae hynny'n dod o brofiad sy'n ymestyn gynllau gydw i'n yr accolades yn ôl de englynedd. Felly chi, sy'n hwyro felly bod llawer o'r prosiectau roedd y beirniad yma wedi ymweld yn hw, wedi i hysbrydoli nhw, ond nhw ar dan pan ddwyson yn ôl oherwydd be oedd yn wedi weld ganddo chi. Eleni, dyna ni'n cael y nifer fel o Gari'n sôn, nifer uchel i oed o geisiadau ac hefyd ymrywiaeth eang o brojectau. A mae'n braf y gweld bod cymaint iawn o honna chi sy'n wedi cyrraedd y rownd derfynol wedi gweithio mewn partneriaeth gyda gwahanol sefydliadau gwahanol gan gynnwys sector anibynol, gwirboddol a strydol. Daeth y cysiadau o bob rhan o Gymru bron, ac yr ynddyn cynnwys pob grŵp o ran oedran. Ac ym hob un o'r cysiadau, roedd yn un chwilio am dystiolaeth o'r ffordd yr oedd y prosiectau yma wedi arwain at ganyniadau positif i bobl, a sut oedd sefydliadau wedi medru datblygu sgiliau i staff. Fi oedd yna rioed gwell cyfle i ddangos y gorau yn yn sector. Mae Cymru iachach 
wedi clisnodi can miliwn o dyna i fydd soddi yn ystod y dwy flynedd nesaf i adnabod modela newydd ofal sydd yn gweithio'n lleol a gyna gyda lwc i cynhadu ar draws Cymru. Fel bod y can mil a hanner, cant pum deg mil, ddylwn i ddeud, o unigolion sy'n dibynnu ar o wasanaeth gofal, yn cael o fôn i fynwy yr un math o ofal. Chi y gweithwyr yn y sector gofal. Chi yn y falwyr. Ond sector breifert, y sector gwirfoddol, a'r sector cohoedus. Chi sy'n deall ore beth y mae'r sector yma i angen. Chi sydd ar profiad a'r sgiliau. Chi sydd ar brydfrydedd i ysbrydoli eraill. Bod nhw'n bartneriad neu eraill i gydweithio gyda chi ac i anelu yn uchel. I always remember as a sixth form student learning Robert Browning's poem that included those lines, a man's reach should exceed his grasp, or what's the heaven for? And I can remember my English teacher trying to explain to us what those, meant, what those words meant. But this is his definition. You can achieve more than what you think or others think you can. And therefore, for me, the message is, go for it, reach up, aim high. I'd like to thank our many sponsors, their names are behind me here, for their continued support and also the many partners whose representatives helped us a great deal with the judging panels. I also like to naturally welcome members of the Board of Social Care Wales and thank also the staff of Social Care Wales for the wonderful arrangements that we've all benefited from this afternoon. I also welcome Richard and look forward to his presentation. But I'd like first to introduce Hugh Iranka Davis. He will present the awards this afternoon. Hugh is a very experienced parliamentarian, but a new minister for us. And I think that this is the first time that you've attended an, an accolade like this. We are grateful not only for your presence today, but also for the inspiration and leadership you offer in your portfolio and its responsibilities to social care. Hugh, please come. Diolch yn iawn ar wel, a Gary hefyd, diolch yn iawn. Uh, a diolch hefyd, uh, am fynwahodd i yma heddiw. It's a real delight to join with you all today in these magnificent surroundings, but also on what I have to say is a magnificent occasion. One of the reasons that I came back to Wales from the UK Parliament was to involve myself in the things that matter to people on a day-to-day -day basis, those bread and butter issues that make a difference to people's quality of life, whatever age they are, whoever they are, wherever they're from. Uh, and that's why it is genuinely, when I say it's a delight to be here with you today, it really is because of all the work that you do. And I'll touch on, in my brief words, some aspects of that. But before I talk about the importance of this event, can I just first thank you all from the bottom of my heart for the amazing work you do, the passion, the dedication, the commitment, the enthusiasm that you bring to the work that you do, but also to the people that you provide care for in a myriad of different ways, I have to say. The care that you provide, I would say, encapsulates public service at its very, very best. And at the heart of that is you, the workforce. 
People rely on your skills and your professionalism and your compassion to care for them. Sometimes you may take it for granted, but you make a difference in your communities and across the whole of Wales every day and in so many different life-changing ways. So it is so important to recognize and celebrate the excellence in social care. And why? Because too often what we see in the media and elsewhere is only the portrayals of the negative. It misses the myriad of positive, vital contributions that you make to so many people from all walks of life right across our nation. And that's why I'm delighted to be with you here today presenting these prestigious accolades. And we should be proud, as Arwell has already mentioned, and encouraged that this year's awards attracted a record number of entries. And I've been impressed to see such a wide variety of projects submitted. And I've also been fortunate in the, I think it's near enough 10 months now uh, that I've been a minister to visit so many fantastic projects in social care right across Wales, north, south, east and west. I've seen firsthand how critical the services that you provide are to the people that rely on you, the difference it makes to them, to their families, to their friends, the communities, and the positive difference that you make to people's lives in so many ways. It is a privilege for me to be a minister, to see that work going on. And I will extol that on every platform that I stand on, the excellence of the work that goes on. The people that you care for, their families and friends, have told me firsthand about the personal commitment that you give, how much that means to them. And I've listened while care workers explain their work to me. And I'm always struck by how strongly your pride, your passion for your work shines through. And also, I have to say, the pride and the pleasure that comes from the experience of knowing the difference that you make to the quality of life of the people that you care for. Arwell mentioned this. The conditions we currently underwork in, the, the wide environment that we work in has never been more challenging, but it's always been challenging. And the need for care and support services, we know, is growing exponentially, which brings with it pressure to do, not, do it not only well, not only to the highest quality, but to do it differently. And we're starting to do that in Wales. And the only way we'll do that is we do it working together. And we can do that. I repeatedly say this, we are a small but clever nation. If we can't do things better and differently, nobody can. We can do it, but it's by working together. And in fact, the way we tackle the challenges we face in social care is only by working together. And I'm pleased to say this is something that we're already doing collectively. It's central to our ethos for social care in Wales. It's a principle that is now enshrined in that groundbreaking legislation of the Social Services and Wellbeing Act 2014 and the RISCA, the Regulation Inspection of Social Care Act 2016. And I would say to you, that isn't just some highfalutin legislation. It's when I visited a care home, a residential care home in Newport, and a chap, I won't embarrass him by mentioning his name, he might be here today. A chap who was in the care home who showed me around and the work that was doing on individual dementia plans with David, one of the residents there, working with him, working with their family and so on. And he said, that's the difference that Wales makes when it takes a different approach to person-centered care. We are doing it. And we're also committed to boosting the profile and the status of social care workers so that social care in all its diversity becomes a positive career choice where people are truly valued and supported and the work you do is recognized. And Social Care Wales are leading on the development of a campaign to attract and recruit and retain staff in the social care sector and to publicize that positive image of social care work, which so many of you here today exemplify. And we hope that that campaign will launch in January. Vetli, my digwyddiadau fel hyn, ein gwobrau gofal cymdeithasol, and for the Arvangos are Amrodiad are Gwaith Kaled in Digwith, a Tiol Irchleni Bob Dith. Vetli, Urthini Dathli, a Thani Salu, at Waither and Ithwir, Gadelchini Havid, and Valchio and Waith Pob Eno Honachin, Sin Darpari Govala Hamarth, a Kavlogir Sidwedi, Eich Kevnogi, 
ach anog chi i lwyddo. Rydwch chi i gyd am y heddiw, am eich sgil ach am droddiad rhagorol. Mae'n anhrydedd i mi gael bod yma gyda chi i gydnabod a dathlu eich llwyddiant. Diolch yn fawr iawn am grando, diolch om galon. Thank you from my heart for all the work that you do. I'm delighted to be with you and I'm looking forward to being with you here and seeing all the prize winners and all the effort this afternoon. Diolch mawr iawn. Diolch mawr hyw, diolch mawr iawn. Well, I've never ushered a minister to his seat before. There's a first for him. Diolch mawr, a very strong endorsement for the uh, accolades there from the minister. Thank you. Uh, thank you also, Aruel, for giving us your thoughts about the awards and also for your enthusiasm and your dedication to your role. Diolch mawr iawn i chi. Well, before we go any further, right, I don't know, are there any... Um, Tweeters amongst you? Anybody on Twitter? Yeah? Um, quite a few of you, I should mind. Oh, I can see. Yeah, good for you. Excellent. Um, share your experiences with others, okay? Um, use the hashtag. If you're looking for a hashtag, it's hashtag Accolades Cymru. Ne hashtag Gwobre Cymru and Gymraeg. In Gair. Hashtag Accolades Cymru, hashtag Gwobre Cymru and Gymraeg, right? I'm a bit of a Twitter fan myself. I'm getting a bit itchy now, to be honest, because <laughs> I put the phone away for now. But don't worry, I'll be retweeting you later on today, okay? So I'll be keeping an eye out on those photos and what have you. But yeah, get tweeting, get people interested, get the message out there, what's happening here today, right? It is important, and it's a quick, easy way of telling people, you know, why we're here and what we're celebrating. So get tweeting. Now, Ten, um, yeah, I, they tell me there's people following us, right, from all over the world almost, because... I'd like to ask you all to show me your teeth. Well, no, 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 no. Put them back in. Put them back. <laughs> no, because it's a chance to smile, right? Because we're actually, um, well, we're broadcasting this live over the internet, believe it or not. And we usually get hundreds, if not thousands, of, of people watching us from places as far away as, I don't know, Australia, Pontypris. Um, and I should imagine there'll be just as much interest this year. So just for you to be aware that it is, is also being broadcast. Right, okay, let's move on and put at least some of you, some of you out of your misery um, and just get those nerves getting a little bit quieter, okay? Um, we're building up the tension on, 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 on uh, this occasion. It's an important, it's, it's a big event, okay? So we've got the minister, he's here ready on stage and he's gonna be handing out the awards. So let's make a start. For each of the categories, we will have a perspective from the judging panel. Now, Sue Evans, Chief Executive of Social Care Wales and Deputy Chair of the Judging Panel, was to have been here uh, today to give us that perspective. However, I'm really sorry to say that due to a family bereavement, Sue can't be with us today. And I'm sure that all of you want us to pass on your best wishes to Sue at this sad time. But in Sue's place, I'm delighted to welcome Jerry Evans, Deputy Chief Executive of Social Care Wales. Now, Jerry stepped in at the uh, 11th hour, so to speak. Uh, we're very, very grateful to him. So give him a very warm welcome to the stage, ladies and gentlemen. Jerry Evans. <laughs> Jerry and Gary, that's a recipe for disaster, isn't it? How are you feeling, Jerry? A bit nervous? First, first accolades? Uh, just a little bit, Gary, yes, yes. Um, but I've been given a script and I've been told to stick to it, which won't <laughs> come naturally to me. But Sensible. Yeah. Um, I'm probably not as nervous as many of you in this room are. Um, I'm sure you're desperate to find out the results of, uh, of, of the, uh, uh, the accolades. Um, to be honest, I'm really looking forward to this bit. Having been in, I think, all of the accolades, it's actually been a really positive experience. It's one which I know people have treasured for a long period afterwards. Um, during the judging process, the judges uh, met some incredible people um, doing excellent work, and the sheer enthusiasm and pride in what they did uh, was inspirational. And as Arwell indicated, our board members and other judges were actually came back full of enthusiasm about what they'd witnessed. Um, uh, 
what they thought was people with working with enthusiasm and pride in what they did, and actually it was obvious that they were determined to do their very best for the people that they worked with. Many of the things that the minister just highlighted were witnessed by our judges. Uh, once again, it was great to see so many projects being run as partnerships between different organisations and groups. Uh, there was also plenty of evidence that people are not standing still uh, with huge amounts of effort going into developing new ways of working and improving practice. Uh, all the finalists show that their projects had a positive effect on the people's lives and that was the bottom line as far as the judges were concerned that these projects were having an impact um, and that staff uh, had encouraged and, and worked hard to improve those services. For those of you that have been studying today's programme, um, you may have noticed that only seven of the eight original categories are being awarded. Um, the reason is that the judges felt that the projects on the use of new technology uh, to improve service category were yet ready to be finalists. Uh, the judges did go out and visit two projects and although both had their uh, merits, they were at an early stage of development and the judges felt too early to reach the final. However, the judges were keen that we're, we thanked those projects uh, for putting themselves forward. Uh, both had shoots of brilliant ideas and plenty of enthusiasm. Hopefully, when the accolades are run again, these projects will have developed, and others hold so as well, hopefully, and will be much more enhanced uh, and in running for, uh, for an award. Uh, as the Minister and I will have said, the people the judges met went beyond the minimum standards uh, and their everyday duties. Uh, we should recognise and praise their commitment, encourage that culture of sharing and learning from each other. Um, we didn't get any entries from some parts of Wales uh, and the number of submissions uh, uh, led by private and voluntary organisations were lower than those from the public sector. Uh, again, a development we would hope to see change over time. Uh, but we know there are plenty of excellent practices out there and um, we'll be redoubling our efforts to make sure that the next accolade br brings that, those examples out. Uh, but as they say, you've got to be in it to win it. So that's the message for everybody. And judging by the number of people here today, a lot of people have been in it. So we will be finding out who's won it. Okay. So a big thank you to everybody that's been here, uh, has been helping. Uh, and uh, thank you for the effort in entering these prestigious awards. We know it's a busy time for everybody. And the effort required to enter is great. But thank you all for the efforts you've made. Um, I'm particularly looking forward to seeing the short videos. Each of the projects uh, in the finals will have a short video demonstrating a uh, flavor of what that project's about. There's a slight disappointment that none of those projects felt uh, inclined to actually present their project through the medium of Welsh. So again, that's an area we'll be looking to develop into the future. Okay, back to you, I think, Gary. Thank you, Jerry. thanks very much. And we'll be hearing much more from you shortly because you're gonna be sharing with us the judging panel's comments about the finalists. And we'll be also be asking representatives from our sponsors and others to come up here on stage with me and announce the winners in each category, okay? And the way it'll work is that Jerry and I'll be alternating between Welsh and English for the rest of the ceremony. So please make sure, make sure that you have your simultaneous translation headset at the ready. Otherwise, you won't know what's going on, okay? Um, Fran, back then on table 20, we had a quick little chat, Fran, during the, uh, during the lunch break, didn't we? There we are. Hi, Fran, you okay? And Fran was telling me the translation services are working really well. So, Dai Okay, Fran, a round of applause. <laughs> well done, Fran. <laughs> so that's how it's going to work, okay? So I hope everything is working fine with you and you're not having any problems. If you are, as I said earlier, there are people dotted around the room in T-shirts and what have you. They'll be quite happy to come along and try and help you with that, okay? Yonder, in Barod is in category Cantaf. Gwasanaithai, Sinkali Harwine, Gan Dina Sadion. Si wedi noddi, gan rhwydwaith cyd gynhyrchu Cymru, a diolch yn fawr iawn i chi, yr rhwydwaith cyd gynhyrchu 
am y cefnogaeth, ych yn fawr iawn i chi. Wel, un o brif egwyddorion y ddeddfwriaeth gofal Cymdeithasol ddiweddar yw'r angen i drin pobl fel unigolion. Canfod beth sy'n bwysig iddyn nhw, a neud yn siŵr ei bod yn cael dylanwad cryf ar y math o ofal a chymorth maen nhw'n ei dderbyn. Ac yn y categori hwn, oedd y beirniaid yn chwilio am fod dylai, lle mae bobl sy'n derbyn gofal a chymorth ei teuluoedd a'u cymunedau yn gweithio gyda'i gilydd i gynllunio gyda'r pari i'r gofal a'r cymorth sydd i hangen iawn. Ac o'n nhw hefyd am weld gwestiynau gofal a chymorth sy'n cael eu llunio gan y rhai sy'n ei defnyddio nhw, fel i bod nhw'n diwallu i anghenion yn well. A hefyd, enghreifft iau o ddysgu a datblygu dan arweiniad pobl sy'n derbyn gofal a chymorth neu o falwyr sydd wedi cael effaith fawr ar staff sy'n darparu'r cymorth hwnnw. Felly dyna ni, dyna'r anghenion, ok? The requirements. Ond mae'n ddau brosiect wedi cyrraedd y rown derfynol yn y categori hwn, dau brosiect. Cyngor Bro Morganwg ar gyfer i prosiect Your Choice a PSS Wales sydd wedi leoli yn abergelau ar gyfer i prosiect cysylltu bywydau Cymru, da iawn. Dewch ni gael blas nawr ten, dwch ni edrych ar ddau ffilm byr a cael blas o'r prosiectau hyn yn y ffilmiau. Diolch yn fwy. We are providing a service which gives the choice to the service user as to how they want their package provided to them. It is difficult for disabled people to um, sometimes discuss the things that they want to do because you can't tend to be pushed into a position where you're doing the things that they want you to do. Remove the restrictions that the time and task packages were there before. It's given people the freedom to choose what they want to do with their care package. It's given people and staff the freedom to do what they want when they want. Because I'm confined to bed, and when you're stuck in bed all the time, you need a little bit, bit of a prod sometimes to um, get up and get on the move. And with this new initiative, that um, could be good for me. The improved outcomes for people are just amazing. People are doing things now that they maybe thought they would never do again. To be out and about and moving around and doing the things that you want to do, it is a big help. Outcomes can be anything that person wants to achieve. We can look to achieving it. I don't see any reason why it couldn't be rolled out across the domiciliary sector and I can't wait for that opportunity to be given to everybody. It's their service, it's their life, it's their choice, and they need to start living it. Shared Lives is a service whereby we have people who are unable to live at home on their own at this moment in time and who may have a need such as a limb disability or a mental health need. So we have people who have space in their home for our people to come in and share their family environment with them. So they're ordinary families but they're also recruited and trained through the scheme and all the training and everything they need to know is provided through us as a service. We look after two people, <laughs> both are very, very individual and the care that is provided is based on their needs. I like to live with them because they're good. They look after me a lot. I love the, the dogs and everything and all that. They can find me home, really. It's great. I love it. Up until she came here, I don't think Cheryl, to the best of my knowledge, has ever had any choice. You know, she did what the others were doing. Here, what we've done, we sat with her and she has chosen what she wants to do with her money, where she wants to go. I love being here, yeah. I like the environment, I like, certainly like the food we get, yes. Go on, Cheryl. Sam takes me out on a Saturday. Very good, Greg. It certainly does feel like a family, yes. Yeah, because the support that the, I actually get is, um, is really good. They are happier, very much so. They like to go out and meet people as before, that wasn't really happening. It's very much a service where every day something happens and every day somebody achieves something. So it's never, it's never quiet and it's never boring. Uh, great insight. <laughs> You're well done. Die out. But can you need that gun poise the NS? Do you think that Jerry Noel? I roi rai sylwadau ni gan y beirniaid. Jerry. Diolch, Gary. 
Mae hwn yn gategori pwysig iawn, uh, oherwydd y pwyslais a'r unigolion yn cael effaith ar gwasanaeth maen nhw angen, maen nhw eisiau, a'r ffordd mae'r gwasanaeth yn cael ei ddarparu. Dyna oedd y categori hwn wyth caeth, felly hwn yn anobeithiol iawn y ffaith bod yna wyth brosiect yn gallu dod mynd mlaen. Uh, mewn gerionedd, roedd y prosiect your, your, your choice yn byw fan ni'w enw. Uh, dim jyst pecyn cymorth neu uh, gwasanaethoedd hwn. Roedd yn rhoi i bobl beth oedd yn nhw eisiau. Uh, roedd yn hyblyg iawn a chafodd yr hybrydd ar graff mawr ar y beirniaeth. Fel uh, trefnwyd uh, 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 gwasanaeth, ei hen ddigon o dystiolaeth yn dangos bob agwedd o'r gwasanaeth o'n cael ei ddarparu. Roedd yn canol pwyntio ar yr unigolyn ac yn hytrach na ar y gwasanaeth yr ethos rhai tynghanol y deddfwriaeth newydd. Um, roedd y unigolion a gefnogwyd yn wir yn wraidd y prosiect yma. Mae prosiect PSS Cymru wedi bod yn rhedeg am amser hir, gwelodd y beirniad prosiect arderchog ac yn halwyd gan bobl uh, angerydol uh, a, a brwdfrydu iawn. Roedd gan y prosiect lawer o wahanol feysydd gan gynnwys uh, ynghenion pobl oedd wedi effeithio gan cyffuriau neu alcohol. Roedd y beirniad yn hoffi'r ffaith yn bod nhw'n gallu cwrdd ar cynrychiolwyr o rasiantaeth. Rhai ar bobl agored i newid a, 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 a oedd yn cael eu cefnogi gan y gwasanaeth yma. A hefyd yn arbennig oedd y crysthawi, yr unigolion yn crysthawi nhw i'w cartre ac yn rhannu y bywydau gyda nhw. Right, a moment fawr. Am sy'n ni'n glywed pa brosiect sydd i'n ennill un o'r tlysau gwych mae tu ôl i fi. A'r person sydd ar amlen bwysig yw nor un blanlwe o noddwr y categori sef rhwydwaith cyd gynhyrchu Cymru. Rwch groeso i nor un. Morgan Council. Yeah. Well done. And this were a category, Cyngor Dro Morganog, Army Project, Your Choice, Dirk Lani, Derbyn and Warbord, Andrew Cole, and Kerry Llewellyn, the Manu, Sangor Chiare Maur. Congratulations. <laughs> delighted now to uh, move on to, well, well, our next team and a very, very warm welcome. So, Groeso Cynnes Iawn, i Fran Holmes a Greg Earl a fydd yn derbyn tista scrif cymeradwyaeth uchel a ran PSS Wales. Dewch Lan, come on up, Fran and Greg.
Well done. Got it. Well done. Oh, you want to... Oh, okay. She wants a picture. <laughs> okay. <laughs> There we are, well done. Dior, good luck. Take care, actually. Uh, great start, well done. Good luck, excellent. Um, let's move on to the second category. Uh, effective approaches to safeguarding. Effective approaches to safeguarding. Now this category has been sponsored by law firm Blake Morgan and we thank them very much for their support. Now in this category, what were they looking for? What was this category all about, ladies and gentlemen? Well, they were looking for evidence of how victims of abuse have helped improve practice, how multi-professional learning and development has improved safeguarding skills, and examples of new services that have prevented or reduced harm or provided better support to people who've been harmed. Now, we've got three finalists in this category, ladies and gentlemen, three finalists. We've got North Wales Safeguarding Board for its self-neglect protocol. We've got Newport Children's Services and Bernardo's for their Integrated Family Support Services project. And we've got Pembrokeshire County Council for its Junior Safe Guardians project. Now then, let's see some films. Let's get a taste of these projects in these short films, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> The name of the project is the North Wales Safeguard and Adults Board Self Neglect and the aim was to look at developing a regional protocol across North Wales. The protocol is a way of getting people around a table, getting individuals from different agencies, from housing, from the police, from the fire service, from, from all the different agencies, uh, where there's a concern about a person who might be neglecting themselves. It gives us a, a template, it gives us a, an agenda for holding meetings, it gives us a process for assessing people, so there's a standard way of doing it. Well, the type of things we see is obviously concerns around individuals who potentially self-neglect, individuals, for example, who hoard. If we possibly can, we'll involve the person in the meeting. Often, that person wouldn't want to be involved in a meeting. It might be the last thing that they want to do. But perhaps we'll have an advocate, we'll have somebody to support them, and somebody representing their voice. We've seen, for example, reduction in the level of risk, the level of fire risk and we've been able to identify also across North Wales better multi-agency joint working. In the past we would have done things to people. Today we want the person to be right at the middle of everything that happens uh, and nothing should happen to them without them being involved. We support families in a variety of areas um, relating to parenting, um, domestic abuse, substance misuse, and we provide one-to-one -one support for families in addition to parenting groups. To ensure good outcomes for families, we enable each family to set their own goals, to enable them to embed and sustain change, so that they are enabled to have their children living with them long-term, and the whole aim is to prevent children coming into care. We had a referral done through social services in the hope to support us with our son. He had lots of mental health issues. Um, behavioural issues. The impact, the turnaround has been fantastic. We've now got a very happy 17-year-old that understands himself more. To enable us to um, help families to make change, what we will do is we will undertake an assessment with them and then we will help them to identify their goals and what they want to change. This is in conjunction with Children's Services. I think one of the things that keeps me going in this line of work is seeing the way families can overcome some of the most unbelievable hurdles to keep their children home with them and to see the point where we end where it's children can just be children and the families can thrive and prosper without any intervention is a really wonderful feeling. We have just been guaranteed a further seven years um, contract with Newport. You wouldn't, you wouldn't be here if I didn't have these people s sort of supporting me. Oh. Yeah, he, he was. He, he, he wouldn't be with us. The project is called Junior Safe Guardians, and that's about young people getting involved in safeguarding and having a voice about safeguarding in Pembrokeshire. We come together once a month and 
the issues that affect young people in Pembrokeshire. From there then we create projects and also talk with our decision makers to try and make an awareness of those issues and reduce them in Pembrokeshire. The main benefits of the project is that we are empowering young people to know about safeguarding and enabling them to raise concerns. We can tell decision makers and influencers what it is that young people are actually facing within Pembrokeshire. One of the key things that we do is that we hold an annual safeguarding conference for young people. So we invite representatives from every secondary school to attend. Our conference is a great way to communicate with people across Pembrokeshire about issues. We also educate young people on the current issues that are affecting them. Like last year, we talked about cyberbullying and we've also talked about CSE and other issues. I also think in Pembrokeshire, we've really turned a corner in terms of listening to young people and people are really valuing what people, young people are saying. I feel very knowledgeable knowing that young people are going through these issues in Pembrokeshire but I feel really proud that we can work together and resolve these issues and make an awareness of them. Yeah, three great finalists. Well done, all of you. Let's get um, the judges' thoughts on, uh, on those three projects now, and uh, Jerry. Okay, thanks. This was a very strong category, uh, and it generated a huge amount of debate amongst our judges. And those of you who've met them will know that they're quite a feisty bunch, so that was a, quite a heated debate. This is good news for Wales, because this is the bottom line of social care and social services, keeping people safe. Although there were only six entries, the standard was very, very high. Um, the shortlisted projects visited by the judges uh, were, they agreed, all of a very high standard. Such was their quality that it took some time for the judges to agree who should win and who should be highly commended. The judges found all three projects truly inspiring. Um, so you can take it from me that the difference between these projects is wafer thin. So I hope that's uh, some consolation to those who might not have won, but they were excellent projects. The self-neglect protocol is a very exciting and innovative collaboration which brings huge benefits. The judges were impressed by many aspects of excellent social work, with a readiness to share learning across services, including utility companies and rescue services. The sense of commitment which came through strongly and the focus on relationships and trust. The judges felt that the social workers and the nurses who were part of this project were all doing a fantastic job. In the words of one of our judges, who is a qualified social worker, she was blown away by the standard of social work practice <clears throat> shown by the project run by Newport Children's Services and Bernardo's. Um, judges found the project to be creative, engaging, with the workers again doing some fantastic work. They liked the fact that it was not just preventing risk but also helping families learn how to prevent harm. In the judges' opinion, this would be a project that would want to see mainstreamed across the whole of Wales. Then finally, the, the judges said they met an awesome group of young people when they visited the Pembrokeshire Junior uh, Safe Guardians project. It was a unique project that started after one local school had experienced several suicides amongst his pupils. Uh, workshops are held to speak to pupils uh, from local schools so they can go back and share the messages with their friends. The ripple effect of the project is fantastic uh, and offer safeguarding boards uh, and other safeguarding boards are trying to get these young people to teach them how to replicate this project in other parts of the country. It was the epitome of how to get young people involved in tackling social care issues. Well, some great projects there and some interesting comments from the uh, panel of adjudicators. Now then, let's find out who our winner is in this category and let's invite on the stage Claire Rawl from our sponsor for this category, Blake Morgan, ladies and gentlemen. Claire. great pleasure for Blake Morgan to be afforded the opportunity to sponsor uh, this award and our congratulations go to all of the finalists. 
And the winner of uh, this category, I'm delighted to say, is Newport Children's Services and Bernardo's. Well done. Thank you. Thank you very much, Claire. Newport Children's Services and Bernardo's. Congratulations to them. Here they come. Heidi Goodwin and Vicky South. Heidi and Vicky from Newport Children's Services and Bernardo's. Well done. And we've got some more important people coming on stage now. Please put your hands together for the highly commended projects in this category, ladies and gentlemen. First of all, the North Wales Safeguarding Board welcome Bethan Jones Edwards and Michelle Denwood to receive your certificates on behalf of the board. Bethan and Michelle. And next, ladies and gentlemen, the same, please, enthusiastic welcome to the second highly commended project in this category, Pembrokeshire Junior Safe Guardians. Come forward, Jamie Bevan and Bethany Roberts, please, from Pem Pembrokeshire County Council. Well done. Well done, all of you. Excellent. Well, my best can answer is to the land. In traditive category, save the Vnadio Data Gamchwili Gavnogi Gwaith Atal, a Marath Gunnar, and a Faith Yolrui. The Gunna category, Hun, or the Bayern and Hulia and Lotabeth, and Hulia am Niver or Possibiliade, the Vnadio Testiolite or Hinsi the Angeni Atal Galu, ne Marath Gunharach, Ile Hai Galu. I'm going to go to the house and 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 I'm going to go to the house Mae beth am gael blas o'r prosiect yma, dwi'n cael gael gwylio y ffilm canlynol gyfeillion. The project started as a result of some research that was done where they had already found that up to 40% of people with existing double-handed care packages could be supported by a single carer. The aim would be to enable more people to be more independent. Yeah, yeah. I think it's fantastic because it's developed around the person and that makes a heck of a difference. They're less dependent on schedules and carers um, as a result of having the equipment in order to enable yeah. them to live the life that they want. I'm not depending on people to do things for me, I can do them for myself. Permitting independence helps people have more dignity as it allows us to step back and not be so hands-on with people, touching them all the time and allowing them to roll themselves or do a bit more for themselves. 
As far as wider outcomes are concerned, there's training for carers, so they're more competent in what they do day to day. Um, it releases time for care agencies so that they can look after more people. And we're hoping that over this next year, we can prove that reducing the number of carers will improve on delayed transfers of care from hospital to Keeping them at home, in their own homes, I know that's a big thing for a lot of people. It's improved my life because I've got my own independence back. Well done. So, how is this going to work now then? Huh? Well, my panel been the idea to go and get a dream pet. I'm going to need my custodian and my staff to get a lethal. That's he. He didn't order us to demand in custodians in case of round Derveno. I do another one to give, but then on any the war Okay. My high dear bed near the tino, but on case of a savon of a null, and my body in day long. Oh, and it's doing them an automatic, okay? As he can in either gun, but I approach a congressional band, bro, where he wouldn't be going to die, and it's a man of beer night, technical guy, gun jerry. Look at him. Um, right on the category now with, uh, I don't want to do any of the bar, yawn, or get shot there. I was about in the world, he said, and he could have in Hamri and Hermed of Nodio Data and Quill. He met a lump city that's like he was an item and for the official. Um, our honor of Bethma, go welcome to Tesla Camry, have a partner yet in three or some item line. I've said then go be so well the category ma and Kurt Krohai, Dross of Lenado in this summer. And, um, can my project see Ben Roy the Rinigian at the name Welda? Going to be the other. When some of you are around and around the Project Amal or Higher or he gave no gi pobol. Rubeth and Gubba of Sauer was an ethe, Goval Cartre, I hid not a catcher be Goval and and Doda Draus Bob dear Bob Auer. Um, can we be near what a kid we threat yet? I guess if I bore the echid a project, Emma, our father the Nuwedi Consignor project. Roy the Devnother Gwasaneth, our nice Gavarvod, our Binyad. An astonishing world and positive yawn. I'm a I'm a venter at Govala the Nongal. My wedi arwan at Isle of Drachiad, Cavlaun or Dill or Wythion, Sir Bembro. My cali i the Vnadio and dar parwyd Goval Cartre led led a Sir. Ac fel the Vnadir arwardia a hefyd at my cali the Vnadio arwardia a spatai. My nan dangos bod newid mewn diwylliant wedi digwydd a bod y defnyddwyr gwasanaeth project releasing time to care wedi cyrraedd y safon gyfynnol i ennill y gwobr. Nawr te, i agor yr amlen holl bwysig, croeso i'r llwyfan i Dr. Dan Venables, pennaeth ymchwil a datblygu gofal cymdeithasol Llywodraeth Cymru. Croeso i Dan. It's an honour to uh, be asked to do this. Uh, I really feel like uh, we are not worthy. <laughs> the judges have decided that in the use of data and research to support prevention, early intervention and effectiveness category, the finalist, Pembrokeshire County Council, is worthy of winning an accolade. <laughs> Ar y neswyr, Cyngor Sir Benfro, Army Project, Releasing Time to Care. Joanne Jones, Sean Jenkins, where are you? Come on up, the chi olych gwobor, the chi mor iawn.
you know what? The smiles say it all, don't they really? It's not just a smile for the camera, but it's a smile for the project, and it speaks volumes. Well done, all of you. Dayan Khi. Let's move on to the next category of the awards now then. Developing a confident and sustainable workforce, sponsored by the GMB Union. And a big thank you to the Union for their sponsorship of this now then. And in this category, the judges were looking for examples of better recruitment and retention in social work, social care, or early years and childcare developments uh, that help practitioners add to their qualifications and skills, successful initiatives that have encouraged people to choose care as a career and examples of reaching underrepresented groups. An important category. Let's see now then who are through. Who are the finalists in this category, ladies and gentlemen? We've got Bridgend County Borough Council for its project to support newly qualified social workers during their first three years. Uh, yeah, where are they? Come on, let's, let's hear it for Bridgend County Borough Council. That's it. And let's hear it for Right at Home, Cardiff and Newport for its project staff development through improved communications and bespoke training tools. Let's hear it for Cardiff and Newport, Right at Home team. Okay, and for those of us, and many of us here perhaps who aren't familiar with what these projects do, let's have a look at a few films and it'll give us a better insight to the work done. The project is called Supporting Your First Year in Practice and it's for newly qualified social workers and what it does is provide a mix of teaching them as a group and for them to get to know each other as a, as a future network giving them individual mentoring at their places of work and asking them to then consolidate all that at the end of their first year with a portfolio of evidence which will stand them in good stead for their future training. It's been an excellent training programme. We have congregated as a peer group. We've um, shared networks of support and it's really helped bridge the gap between a social work student going into being a qualified social worker. It is a large gap and that training and that transition support really helped kind of ease us into a very important role. Well, the aims relate to why we set it up, which was to try and combat the loss of newly qualified social workers, the attrition rates in, in our teams and ultimately to provide a better service for our service users in Bridgend. I don't think I would have been as resilient as I am now if I hadn't had this first year in practice programme. It was a lot of group support at a point where you feel very overwhelmed. It was nice to know that other people were in the same position, you rely on others and you learn from others and it was very beneficial in that sense. Our project's called Staff Development through improvements in communication and bespoke training tools. We want to provide great care, obviously, for our clients, but what we want is to provide great care and support for our staff, and part of that is making sure that we communicate and that we provide them with the best training possible. I've been working for Right at Home since January 2017. It's the best job I've ever done. Um, I love working uh, in the care industry. Some of the training I've had include um, supervision and appraisal training, manual handling, medication, dementia training, communication training, end of life, and they've also helped me do my QCF, so I've done my level two and my level three, and now I'm going on to my level five. One of the things that is hugely important to our clients is continuity of care. So in order to retain our staff, make them feel rewarded, valued, is making sure we communicate, we're transparent, and that we provide the training that they need to provide that care for the clients. I'm really happy with how my job role has progressed from caregiver to field care supervisor. My confidence has grown loads, and that is from the support from right at home. Um, yeah, it is the best job that I've ever done. You know, the responsibility of a community carer is huge, and so if we invest in them, that investment just pays back tenfold. Do you know what? I really wouldn't like to be judging these competitions because, you know, looking at these films, all these projects are 
Fantastic. Well done, all of you. So, before we find out the winner in this category, let's hear from Jerry what the judges had to say. Right. Okay, some very important messages in those films, I think. Okay, developing a confident and sustainable workforce is a category that's been ever present since the accolades started. Because, as Arwell said earlier, the workforce is our greatest asset. That can sound like a bit of a cliche, but we all know that it's true. Um, and therefore, central to actually a healthier Wales, the, the new government document is actually taking care of our workforce. We have to do that in, in the right ways. And a confident, sustainable workforce is essential if we're going to succeed to address the current and future challenges facing us. We don't only need to keep our current workforce, we need more people to come into this work. And as that message there says, it's a rewarding career, but people need to be properly supported. The two finalists the judges determined were fairly evenly matched, and I think that comes across in the film. At Bridge End County Council, the judges felt they were given a clear explanation of the problem the local authority faced five years ago in relation to its newly qualified social workers. It was clear that since then there had been a clear strategy, and this resulted in things being changed from ne uh, reactive to proactive approaches. Previously, social workers had been eased into dealing with challenging cases over their first three years. However, these days, that is somewhat of a luxury, we all know. But with a combination of intensive support, coaching and mentoring, newly qualified social workers told our judges that they felt well supported and able to cope with challenging cases during their first six to nine months. And I think many of us can imagine what those first six months could be like, okay. Judges were, felt also very positive about the commitment to staff development and training at Right at Home. The organization had doubled in size and staff turnover was very low, which is somewhat of a rare thing to be able to say for many organizations now. Overall, it was felt that Right at Home were very energetic and positive about what they were doing. For the judges, one of the most impressive features was the continuity resulting from low staff turnover. That continuity, they felt, was critical. Um, uh, quick recruitment was a feature as well, and dealing swiftly with any complaints that uh, they encountered. It, it was felt that they were at the top of their game, was the term that was used. It was also impressive that they were able to show clearly the link between their investment in their staff and the quality of outcomes for the users of their services. Well, thanks, Jerry, and uh, I hope that gives you an insight into the thoughts of the panel when they were looking at these um, projects and deciding what the end result would be. Now then, let's find out who our winner is by inviting onto the stage Kelly Andrews from GMB, the sponsors of this category. Kelly. I'm delighted to be here today on behalf of the GMB, who are proud sponsors of this group. Um, and the winner is, the winner of the developing and confident and sustainable category is Bridgen County Council. Well done. Tongo Chiare, Bridgen County Borough Council, supporting newly qualified social workers. Come on up, Claire Holt and Jody Sims from the council to receive your awards. Here they are. Coming up to the stage here. Yeah. Well done. and their loyal supporters. <laughs> and ladies and gentlemen, one of the again, one of the guests, please put your hands together. Oh, and these also deserve a lot of applause. Let's, 
Let's hear the applause ringing through this hall this afternoon now then for the highly commended project in this category. Right at home, Cardiff and Newport, represented by Vivian Foley and Joe Guishard. talking about people here who aren't used to being in the limelight perhaps so it's great to see them having the spotlight this afternoon on this stage not just as individuals but as people representing important projects right across the country at he that said Cymru but he die on Pobi in Honochi. To come out round, ladies and gentlemen, where we're now just beyond the halfway stage of the awards ceremony, okay? And after all that excitement, um, we want you to chill a little bit and give you a bit of a break. Um, I'm sure it's not going to be easy to calm the nerves of all the contenders in every category, okay? But um, you're going to have to wait just a little bit longer to know if you've won this afternoon. But I'm sure you'll find the next 20 minutes will be well worth it. We can give our minister a break from handing out the trophies and the certificates. So, sir, you can go to a perhaps more comfortable seat in the, <laughs> in the hall as we move on to our next item. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I've been really looking forward to this. Um, and I'm sure many of you will as well. We're very, very lucky today, ladies and gentlemen, to have with us best-selling author and world-renowned speaker, Richard McCann. Now then, <laughs> there's a lot of celebrating still going, I don't blame you. I really don't blame you. Enjoy the afternoon, enjoy. But I'd just like to tell you a little bit about Richard. He's fresh from speaking at the National Social Care Conference this morning. And I'll say by way of introduction that um, Richard has faced some huge challenges in his life. And he knows a thing or two about the important difference people like you, sitting at these tables in this hall this afternoon, the difference that people like you can make to those you support at difficult times in their lives. Croeso, in i falch iawn i gael ei ymagad â ni yng Nghardydd, and we're all looking forward to your address. A very, very warm welcome, ladies and gentlemen, on stage to Richard McCann. If you go onto my website, I'm described as a motivational or inspirational speaker, but I have to say, sat there, watching what I've seen on these screens and seeing some of these, or hearing some of these stories so far, I'm the one that's been inspired. So I just want to say that from my heart, well done to what I've heard or seen so far. So yes, I have been through some challenges, you're right. So can we maybe get those challenges out of the way? That thing that I'm known for, if, you can, if you've read the brochure, you'll know what I'm talking about. I want to get it out of the way, the elephant in the room. I meet people outside and I can see the look in their face. Can I talk about it? Is it okay to bring it up and let's get it out of the way. It is true. If we're going to go to my first slide. It is true many, many years ago. I was born with ginger hair. <laughs> I was born with, do we have any gingers I can't see from these lights? Do we have any gingers down here in Wales? We've got one there at least. That was me. Age, can I show my first slide please? It's, uh, this is me age five. Uh, teenagers used to laugh at this, but not anymore. That was me, look at that. You might not have known this, or you might not know this to look at that, but we were brought up, me and my three sisters, on the at-risk register. We lived on a housing estate in North Leeds, uh, a, few, a few miles from here. That was the local shop I used to go to. and uh, We had 126 visits by the social workers by the time I was five, and I don't really remember much about that until I got the file and I read some of the beautiful stories, one story in particular about one of the social workers that had taken it upon herself to come to the house with some shoes some shoes for, 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 for the children. I, I'd love that. And some, there was some bedding as well that she brought. I didn't know these things. That's the kind of things that you, you do, I suppose. And 
This is a picture of me and my mum and dad. And if I am um, not sure how to handle this, I'm, I'm trying to show my slides, but obviously you're flitching, flipping between the camera. This is a picture of mum and dad. And sometimes they would leave us in the house alone while they went to the pub. And I'd, you know, I didn't really know about that. I couldn't remember that. But um, a week before my sixth birthday, and I've not got time to tell you all the detail, but the fact that we were at risk suggests there were things going on in the house that should not have been going on. I won't tell you the detail right now. A week before my sixth birthday, my sister Sonia, um, <laughs> shook me awake. Look at that haircut. And she said, Richard, wake up. Mum's not come home. She'd been out drinking. Let's go look for her. So we left the house, went out into the field at the back of the house, walked down this path where the arrow is. And it wasn't light as it is here. It was pitch black. It was the first time that I felt fear, wondering what could happen to my mum. And we made our way to the local bus stop. I remember sitting at the bus stop. I remember the first bus of the morning pull it up, pulling up and the doors opened. And the bus driver said, are you getting on then? And we, well, Sonia did all the talking. She said, we're waiting for our mum. And uh, we went home and the police came to the house, took me and my three sisters away to this place. This is, this is Beckett's Park Children's Home. I have to say, before this, I had spent some time with foster families because mum used to have breakdowns. She was on psychiatric wards and such like. But we arrived at this children's home. I quite enjoyed it. I quite enjoyed the, the hot chocolate they were giving us. We'd never had hot chocolate, so I loved that. And the attention they were giving us. And so this police officer crouched down beside us and I'll never forget him doing that. He crouched down like you would to children and he said, I'm really sorry to tell you, but your mum's been taken to heaven and told us that we weren't going to see her again. I didn't believe him. So I prayed for my mum to be brought back and later that day, they took us into the visit, visitor's room and I thought she was going to be there visiting us. She wasn't there, but there's a man with a camera took this picture. This picture appeared in the papers and that's how my mum's family found out what happened to their sister or to our mum that night. And there's no easy way of saying this. If you haven't looked in the brochure, basically my mum was murdered that night. Murdered, found on the field at the back of the house. You can't see her, she's under that tent. Murdered, we later discovered by a man called Peter Sutcliffe, who became known as the Yorkshire Ripper. He murdered 13 women in the north of England. And my mum, Wilma McCann, was the first of 13 women to die. I know that's quite a traumatic thing that we went through, but the great news is, the very fact that I'm stood in front of you right now is I... I bounced back from that. I found that resilience to bounce back from that. And I guess it was because of some people not too dissimilar to you guys. And I say guys, I mean everybody that came into my life and helped me, nudged me, encouraged me along the way. I turned six in the children's home. And the following year, 1976, we set up home with my father and his new girlfriend, another council estate, the other side of Leeds. And up until this point, I've been asking myself, why? Why my mum? And here's what I came up with. My why? Why well, know Why? I told myself that God had intervened and took my mum away from all the beatings, all the violence, all the drugs and all the stuff that was going on in the house so that me and my sisters could have a fresh start, a new life with my father. I think it was the first example of me trying to think positive, finding that ray of sunshine in that dark cloud. But do you know what? Um, the belief that it happened for a reason to give us a fresh start with my dad was how I dealt with it. And I must just say something. Do you know that picture that? I didn't tell the group earlier. Do you know that picture that was taken by the press? of those four children with toys, it wasn't real. It was for the cameras. Do you know what actually happened? They gave us the toys, took the picture, and they took the toys off of us. You couldn't go into the visiting room. That was out of bounds. It was like just for the papers to make it look like we were playing with toys. I never forgot how that felt, by the way. So this was 1976, and although I tried to tell myself it happened for a reason to get away from all the poverty, you know, it was like out of the frying pan into the fire. My dad was a brutal man as is documented in that file that I've got at home, with some of it being black marker penned out. He drowned the dog in the bath. He used to beat us with sticks. He wouldn't stab me with a fork for shoplifting. All of us got beaten, even Pauline, my stepmom, she fled on her hands and knees out that front door. You got the idea. You got the idea. Some people say to me, what happened to your dad? I'll show you what happened to my dad. Here's my dad in more recent years. Here's my dad at night. Because you know what else? Um, I've got to remember that. I'm not, this, is not my, this is not my motivational talk. When I give my motivational talk, I talk about the importance of an I can attitude. A lot of you in this room have got an I can attitude. One of the things I can also do is forgive, and I forgave my father 
10 years ago. We had a tragedy in our family and I found forgiveness. I'm so glad that I did find that forgiveness because we lost him four years ago. I miss, I miss the guy. I want to show him a school photograph. I mean, some of you are old enough to remember how big that Peter Sutcliffe I prefer to call him by his name, how big it became. My classmates would come up to me at school, is it true about your mum being this Yorkshire Ripper's first victim? Is it true that your mum was a prostitute? I hated that. I thought, and I was wrong, I thought that they're all better than me. I was never going to achieve anything. And to top it off, to make matters even worse, I ginger hair as well. <laughs> ginger massive. Did you know, yeah. I think it's a British thing. You've got to find a bit of humour in a dark subject. And uh, let's fast forward a little bit. Mum's killer, Peter Sutcliffe, was arrested. It was over. Do you know 24 children were left without a mother by the time that he'd finished? I'd become friends with many of those because we got this common bond. And he was arrested and then, well, we still had my dad. We still had my dad to cope with. He was still drinking. And as young adults or young teenagers, we started drinking as well, did me and Sonia. We were drinking cider. We were sniffing glue. We were doing all that stuff. We were sniffing aerosol aerosol cans trying to get a high my dad beat Sonia so badly that she was taken by the NSPCC away from the house into hospital initially and then into a children's home it's a, a secure children's home for disruptive kids and she never lived with us again but the following year this is 83 I joined the same school that Sonia was going to I could see my sister again I couldn't tell my dad it had gone crazy it had gone crazy. And I did start standing up to my dad as a teenager. And I ran away from home twice and I slept the streets. Not long-term homeless. I won't try and make it out to be worse than it is. But I did sleep in a bus shelter one night. I also once slept in a portal all night. But the main thing was dad wasn't hitting me. There is, you know, there's a, a couple of teachers. And I know teachers are not what you do, but it's very similar. You know, bringing out the best in people. And one of my teachers, Miss, Miss Birkinshaw, I liked Miss, I, I think I am... She was like a fan. I'm going to say I loved her. I did, I did love the way that she, where she dealt with me. She cared for me, asking about me. How am I getting on? She brought me a pair of football shoes. I had football. Um, I played football for the team, but I had these second-hand football boots. And she gave me her son's football boots. You don't forget things like that. But um, the thing that I'll never forget is what happened when I was in year nine at school. It was my English teacher, another one, another professional that wanted the best for me. He encouraged me to take part in the public speaking competition at school. And I initially said, there's no way I'm getting on that stage. But then I thought about it. And I thought to myself, it can't be as bad as losing my mum to a serial killer. So I entered this competition. But I didn't do what my competitors did. I didn't stand here and there's nothing wrong with this. That's what these things are for. I didn't, I stood over here without any notes, without any posters or flip charts. And I spoke about the one thing that I knew a little bit about, pigeons. My dad raced racing pigeons anybody old enough to remember the film Kez with his kestrel it was a bit like that except it was pigeons I did my talk no notes but my best bit was this at the edge of the stage behind the curtains on the floor in a cardboard box can you guess what I brought with me a hedgehog <laughs> I won that competition I won that competition I'll never forget when they announced my name, a bit like some of what we've heard already. They announced my name, I nearly cried. And I realised at that point that maybe I'm not completely damaged goods and maybe I could amount to something. It's not a coincidence that I got on the stage age 13 and I'm stood in front of you right now. Sometimes you've got to do the scary things. The potential to win was always there. Now I wonder what else I had the potential for that I didn't uncover, things I never tried, cricket, pop, that's for posh people, you know, piano for posh people. You know. More importantly, I wonder what each of you have got the potential for that you've yet to uncover. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to break it up a little bit. I'm going to invite four of you, I'll choose, to come to the front. I'm going to help you do something that's going to scare the life out of you. We're gonna, I've got a prize for the winner, you're going to sing, okay? I'm going to come amongst you now, and I'm, I'm only joking, I'm only joking. <laughs> that's how I felt. How you just felt, you sometimes got to do those scary things because that's when you're going to grow. By the way, this is my English teacher. The BBC did a documentary about my life. Don't know who, who, he, who that is on the left. He's from, is he from these parts? He's it, yeah. Alan Jones, I met a schoolboy error, came to my house to do some filming for this documentary. Do you know the snowman, the snowman, the thing that he sang? I bought the book and I, I said, will, will, will you sign your book? You idiot. This is, you won't believe how many people have done that. He signed it anyway. Uh, the point is I, I grew. Thank you. I grew. I am on Twitter, by the way. If you do any tweet, I'll see you on there. 
I grew, I became more confident. When I got to 16, I thought I was a big man at 16. I walked out of school. I did not take my exams. And I moved in with my sister, Sonia. She had a flat and I got my first job. I slept on the sofa in the flat. My first job was ironing trousers. Ironing trousers, but I was one of the best ironer trousers they had. I do love ironing now, by the way. I do love ironing. And I strive for excellence in ironing. I, 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 no, I really do. I really do. But I hated the job after, after a couple of years of doing that. Anybody here hate their job? Anybody hate the job? Thank you for being honest. Thank you. <laughs> if you hate your job, you've got to do something about it. You've got to do something about it. I would change how you think about it or maybe transfer somebody, do something else that fulfills you. My next job was washing plates in a hotel. I'm washing plates in a hotel. That's all I thought was good for back then. And what's interesting, I was back there, same hotel, about four, four months ago, speaking at a conference for a law firm, the partners, and I went into the kitchen that I used to wash the plate. Now, 29 years later, took a picture. That was my first slide, actually. And anyway, I, I decided to take control of my future, and I went down to London. I joined the army, the British army. And this is Woolwich Barracks in London, where I did my basic training, and I told a little white lie. You see, when you tell somebody mum was murdered by a serial killer, it's a really awkward conversation. And rather than make somebody feel awkward, I said, oh, it was a car accident. Although if you know anybody that's lost a loved one through a car accident, you know, it's no less painful. A loss of a loved one is a loss of a loved one. But I told them it was a car accident. And they accepted that. This is me, me. You can tell it's me, my basic training <laughs> with the ginger hair there under that mask. That's, that's a changing parade. Things they're dirty in the basic training. Anyway, I was posted out to Germany. And as is often the case in life, you can... You can be heading in a certain direction with this vision and all this stuff, but sometimes stuff happens when you least expect it. In December 1989, this magazine was published about my mum's killer. My secret was out, my cover was blown, and I had a breakdown. I ended up on the psychiatric ward of Hanover Military Hospital, where at last I was going to get some professional help and support. Or so I thought. They kicked me out. Apparently, I've got a personality disorder, they said. I was unfit for army service. They kicked me out and I came back to Leeds. The family had disintegrated by now and my two younger sisters were back in care and uh, I moved. So Pauline had left my, my stepmom had left my dad. And, and, um, and what's interesting is just a few months ago, I was in, despite being unfit for army service, I've just been invited by the British Army to go back and train their trainers. How, how, how mad is that? <laughs> I'm, I'm okay now. It's really interesting. These are all officers and, and, and such like down in Winchester a few months ago. Anyway, I moved in with my sister, Sonia. That's her in rehab. St. Anne's in rehab. She was in rehab a few times. She became an alcoholic. I didn't tell you some of the detail, but mum's boyfriend was being a bit more friendly with my sister Sonia than he should have been. Poor, the poor, the poor thing. She kept it to herself. She kept it to herself. And it explained everything. You know, the wet in the bed till she was about 12 or 13. And she got, in, before she left. And uh, anyway, it explained everything when she told me what had been happening. And we lived above a, we actually sadly lived above a massage parlor, which was, you know, seeing these vulnerable women that had been on their own tragic journey. You know, it was, it was like seeing mum. Anyway, it was, it was horrible. But I got a job stacking boxes in a warehouse for a ladies' wear company. And, you know, I was enthusiastic. I got promoted to run the computer system. And the pay rise that I got enabled me to get a place of my own. It was perfect. Not the whole block. <laughs> it was the first floor, first, first floor flat. That come out right. First floor flat, yes. Two minutes from work, no bus fares. But after I've been living there for three years, I've been burgled three times. I now became uninsurable. And I was sleeping the big knife under my pillow, thinking, well, they might break in. You know, whilst I'm there, they didn't, but I thought they might. Well, it forced me to do something about it. There's always something you can do in a situation. I'll buy my own house. I always thought, and I was wrong, that people that own their own homes were better than me. I had to save up for a deposit and I couldn't go out partying every weekend and I, I got my, my little house on the prairie. My next door neighbour was a CID officer, got a bank loan for a car, was bordering on middle class. <laughs> I'm joking, but I was actually, wasn't I? in some ways. Anyway, I can joke, I wasn't joking there because that was, two, what was that, 1994? 1995, I started hanging around with the wrong crowd at work. I started taking speed, ecstasy, cocaine. I started phoning in sick. I lost, I lost my way. I lost my job. I lost my freedom. I lost my liberty. 
because for dealing drugs, I got sent to the very same prison that Peter Sutcliffe was sent to. Now I'm there, dressed like Jeremy Kyle. <laughs> yeah. I wasn't, I'm not laughing there, by the way. I wasn't laughing when I went back there. By the way, if you laugh then, that's because you know who Jeremy Kyle is. That's shame on you. <laughs> anyway, I got through my sentence and I vowed to never put myself at risk of returning to a place like that. And I came out of Vanley Prison and the joy of being released 21 years ago left me when I found myself back in court a few, a few weeks later, getting my house repossessed. Nobody would, nobody would give me a job until my sixth and final week I went for this final job interview and Lauren Simmons, who was on the documentary of the BBC last year, gave me a job. I think it was the second week in September, about now actually, 21 years ago. I must do a post about that on LinkedIn. He gave me a chance. He gave me a chance in a warehouse and I, and I thrived. I got promoted, got my own little department. I paid off all the money that I owed to the banks and I changed my circle of friends. I took up salsa dancing. Is there anybody here that does salsa? Anybody do salsa? Any hands? Oh, do you do salsa? Brilliant. If I had time, I'd do that, I'd get you a, I, um, I did change my circle of friends, and I got some, finally got myself some counselling. I've not told you, I usually get an hour, but I failed at so many relationships, pushing people away. I finally got what I should have got as a child, and that is some support, some guidance, some counselling to deal with what we've been through. Two and a half years of counselling. And she said to me, Sandra, the counsellor, where would you like to be in five years' time, if you could be anywhere? I said, I'd like to be married. I'd like to have some kids. Some ginger kids. <laughs> Does anybody have ginger kids down in there? Uh, woo -hoo. <laughs> have you? But the point is there, there's, you know this, one of those seven pillars that we heard about earlier was the help. I was that in the last session, that was early this morning, wasn't it? Help, asking for help. Some people, not in this sector, but some people out there in the wider world think that asking for help is a sign of weakness. It's the opposite, actually. Sometimes it takes guts to ask for help. Anyway, we parted company in 2002, did me and the counsellor. And then that year, in fact, my sister, Sonia, who you've heard a little bit about, she stabbed her boyfriend in self-defence, her violent... They've always been violent to her. And uh, she didn't kill him. I made a decision that was going to change my, the direction of my life. I thought, I'm not having a world judging my sister. Lock her up and throw away the key. No, 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 no. You need to know what we've been through. And I decided to write that book. One of the scariest things I've ever done. And we read that book. And we read Just a Boy. One of you. I missed an opportunity. <laughs> I'd hang around, but I've got a train to get up at four o'clock. Uh, uh, it was a huge success. It's uh, number one in the charts. It's now sold half a million copies, 11 different languages. And who cares? Big deal. The big deal is the potential to write the book was always there. Uh, and one thing does lead to another. And uh, the second book came out in 2007. Uh, but unfortunately, in 2007, that is when, well, I got the phone call from my other sister, Angela, to tell me, Sonia, my, uh, my soulmate uh, had taken her life. I, I'm not angry. I'm not bitter. I just miss her to death. And, um, but there were some mistakes made, placing us with my father without any follow-up follow support. That's when the, the report ends. My grandparents tried to adopt us when mum died, and they, they chose to place us with my violent father and... Uh, and then she went into care back in 12, 13, and she didn't, she didn't get the support that she desperately needed. And if she'd done that, she, she might still be here today. I do think she's still around me, by the way. I miss Sonia. I miss Sonia. Um, but I won't leave you in that space. I'll, I'll, I'm an inspirational speaker. I'll try and leave you with a happy ending in five minutes. I, I got my first invitation to speak at a conference, not too dissimilar to this, back in 2005. I was scared. But I knew that if I did the thing that scared me, it might help with my lack of confidence. My confidence had taken a, a kick in when I went to prison. So I, I, I accepted it. And you know, well, you know what? I'm so glad that I did because it was a first step to a journey that's taken me to share my story uh, in Iran, Italy, Luxembourg, Canada, South Africa, all around the world. And I've probably spoken, well, it's just short of 2,500 times now. Yeah, who cares? I tell you what, <laughs> the big deal about the whole thing is this. I didn't know it as a child that that potential was in there, but it absolutely is. It's in there in every person we come into contact with, but sometimes it takes the likes of you and the great work that you do to help nudge them along in, that, in, the, in the way that you obviously are doing. That's why you're here today. Uh, here's my happy ending. Uh, that's my biggest, um, biggest audience, 4,000. Mr. Hill, my teacher, was there. And uh, I met Helen in 2004, and she said to me when I met her, tell me a little bit about yourself. <laughs> she actually did say that. 
and we got married. That's us getting married on the 1st of July. That's my mum's birthday. And it's up on the doorsteps of the house my mum lived in as a young girl, up on the Isle of Skye. And then look what happened next. Da -da. Our daughter was born. We called her Skye. She's got a lovely head. <laughs> She's got a lovely head <laughs> of ginger hair. <laughs> which has grown a bit longer now, look at that, come on. <laughs> Beautiful, as is my son, Ellis, also with ginger hair, as is my daughter, Isla, also with ginger hair, um, as is, no, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think it through properly, should I have another child? Yeah, you don't think about the shoes when they grow up, and you think it's just baby clothes, but when you start getting a bit older, and iPhones and all the rest of it, anyway, I love my kids. And um, I'm going to finish now. I've got three minutes to squeeze this in. So that was a condensed version of the journey that I've been on. And I just want to kind of congratulate you for choosing the career paths that you've all been on because you know what the world needs. Sadly, leads people like you and the work that you obviously take pride in, all, although you should if you don't. But I want to share this with you before I go. It's not really to do with social care. Or maybe it is. Maybe it is. I don't know. But any parents in the room? Any parents in the room? A few, just three of you. Yeah. Well, I'm a parent, as you know. And I'm going home tonight from here. And we're going glamping tomorrow. I can't wait. I've been away from home for a few days. And I went to my son's parents' evening. And on the wall, there was 30 Polaroid pictures. The kids had obviously been asked, what do you want to do when you're older? I want to be a teacher. I want to be a chef. I want to be a YouTuber. Look what my son wants to do. <laughs> he wants to be a motivational speaker. You can imagine how disappointed I was. When he told me that the teaching assistant, age 20, that didn't seem to understand potential, when she laughed at him, I don't know what she meant. I didn't. I encouraged him. Because I could, I, I could see, I'm not going to see it, I know it's in every single person we come into contact with. Let me finish with these wise words from an eight-year-old ginger boy, my son, Ellis McCann, speaking to, well, a rather large crowd, and then we're done. As they used to say on TV, run VT. My first presentation was in front of 29 people at school in class. Then was 140, followed by 400, and my latest presentation <laughs> was in front of 1,500 teachers at the Leeds Arena about six weeks ago. And <laughs> Each time I stepped outside my comfort zone, got bigger, bigger, and bigger. <laughs> my thoughts are these never underestimate the potential that lies within each and every one of you. That's you, you. In fact, that's all of you. Because if I can stand up here, aged eight, in front of 3,000 of you, then I've got a question for you. <laughs> what can you do? <laughs> I'm Ellis McCann, motivational speaker, aged eight. Thank you very much. <laughs> I'll, I'll tell him. I, I will tell him that you applauded. And uh, if you've got young people or maybe people you come into contact with that might want to watch that, just go onto his website, ellismccann.co.uk. You can share, maybe inspire some young people. Listen, I'm going to finish now with a few words of these. If I can overcome the things that I've been through, I've actually not shared it all with you, but you know the, the big challenge that I went through as a child with losing mum to a serial killer. Children's homes, at-risk register, all that stuff, low self-esteem, self-harming, oh, all sorts of stuff, all that stuff, leaving school, no qualifications, kicked out of the army, drugs, prison, my fault, I appreciate that. Losing my sister, she took her life in 2007, you know. My wife being diagnosed with breast cancer five years ago, completely having a double mastectomy and reconstruction. If despite all those challenges, I can, you know, step outside my comfort zone and go on to achieve far more than I ever dreamt possible, if I can, and you know this, and the very fact that you're in this room means that you know it as well, then you can too. I'm Richard McCann, 
motivational speaker. It's been a real pleasure and honour to be here. Keep up the fantastic work that you're doing. Thank you very much. Thank you. Do you know sometimes the word inspirational is used too loosely, isn't it? This was inspiring, that was inspirational, but that was inspirational. Diolch to Richard, thank you very much for an inspiring address. And um, that's something I think, ladies and gentlemen, you'll agree with me, will stay with each and every one of us for a long, long time. And just one thing, Richard, I wouldn't worry too much about your hair changing colour. Look what happened to me. <laughs> <laughs> Good luck. Good luck with your work and your life. Now then, ladies and gentlemen, let's move on. I'm still some in in category. Nesani. Can I add a regoral i bobol a boboi trividi with sodi mentaski? and that's plaggy stuff. Now, there are categories that we can do with the Brief of School of Gored in Cymru, but in the Brief of School of Gored, I'm now with the Brief of School of Gored, I'm now with the Brief of School of Gored. And the hwn, roedd y am 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 a llesiant, a thystiolaeth o ddat blygu sgiliau arwyn ydiaith mewn rheolwyr newydd neu rai mwy profiadol. Right, y prosiectau sydd y cyrraedd y rhwng derfynol. Care without compassion o gastell nedd ar gyfer i prosiect nhw i gyfoethogi bywydau trigolion trwy ddysgu a ddat blygu'r gweithlu. A cyngor sy'n rhyflint ar gyfer i prosiect Progress for Providers. Ni'n ni gael gweld ffilm byr nawr o'r prosiects ma i chi gael blas o'r ddau prosiect. Enjoy o'ch y ffilmiau. The project awards a quality mark to providers who've reached a certain standard in person-centred practice. We started this project because in 2015 we had new legislation that was coming in, we had no more money to work with and we have difficulty recruiting and retaining care staff. The programme uses person-centred tools and it allows staff to get to know individuals more. We've been able to give staff that right, if you like, not to sort of be reserved, to be able to sit down, have a cup of coffee, have a chat, take people out, bring ideas in. And so it's a happier, safer environment. You know, they treat me just like family and I treat them like a big family, you know. Staff connect with the residents. They get to know them. They know when things are wrong. They know when things are right. They're able to deliver what matters for that individual. So it's more bespoke. We've moved away from task-focused care to delivering what matters for individuals. They're wonderful. I, I can't fault them, really. It's changing the whole face of social care. It's definitely the way forward in care. The name of the project is Enhancing Service Users' Lives Through Investment and Training into Staff. And uh, we aim to support young adults with learning disabilities and challenging behaviour to live a more independent and less restrictive life. Uh, we're based uh, on a farm and that gives us lots of opportunities to develop even further skills, not just within the home, but outside on, on the land itself. Brilliant, it's better than the other places I've been to. My wish is to like, get my own place, settle down. I am learning that here to do for me to move on. Our job is really to try and push them and trying to get them to, to a place where they feel better about themselves because they're more independent. I'm happy with it. Uh, um, a few years back, I wouldn't have thought it would have gone this far. The training staff get is mainly around values and behaviour, but we also do other elements as well of it, such as teaching the staff how to assess that data that we collect and look to see what, which parts of it we can improve and which parts need um, the clinical team's more attention at that time. Starting in really well. It's been helpful with me to get my life sorted. 
and they're going to go up to him, two trees, up past him, two trees. I think the staff are giving a terrific amount of confidence and I think it's rewarding for us to see that the training has, has helped people take on different roles that they never thought would possibly would challenge them as much as they did. That in turn just shows a happy home, a happy service users really. Well done, both projects there. Dayaun. Well, before we find out who won, let's have the judges' opinion and some comments from the judges on um, this section here. And let's go over to Jerry, who's joining me back on stage. Right. Now, with the Onda, I won the category three etso. I fell in the world. My ethos, a guide, a man, uh, uh, Fiction in your neighbor, uh, dead body of me with. Um, on a deg or gay shatter, I'm a, I'm a, uh, in a project of map. With the Barnard and Team Law, but the Marumiat Creer Gun Project Seer Flint Progress in to, for Providers, you wet us of on a goval, you bobble here. I can stick here or be over me, you slogan, or grey say you alungatre, gun that parry hymns in Boisig. Well, the Beniad and Val Hoshara da Fobol or the Derbin uh, go Valachamorth, Agana Gustal Aramar Verwir. Well, the Heavens and Val Yaun, but the Guabraya Rodwe di Gatrevi Goval, Ame Savone Guasaneth, and Kali Guirion Adibanol. Well, the Stioleth Glear, a Withium and Partneriath, a Froviat positive Ibobol Sidang and Camorth. Get a care without compromise. Roedd y beirniad wedi cael argraff da o sut oedd y tîm oedd yn uh, y cefnogi pobl ac y hynion cymleth iawn yn gweithio gyda'i gilydd. Roedd eu ffocws ar helpu'r rhai, lle roedd y bywydau wedi cael eu uh, effeithio gan ddigwyddiadau sylweddol gan arwain at iechyd meddwl gwael iawn. Nododd y beirniad hefyd ansawdd y rhyfforddiant a dyblygiad staff ac oedd yn cefnogi dillo weithio sy'n canolbwyntio ar yr unigolyn. Na ote, dwch ni ddarganfod fod yn unillydd a gwahodd i'r llwyfan sgwylch yn dda Richard Pearl o noddwyr y categori yma Brifysgol Agored yng Nghymru. Richard, rwch groeso dda fe, give him a warm welcome. Many congratulations to both finalists and uh, good luck. The winner of the excellent outcomes for people of all ages by investing in the learning and development of staff category is Flincher County Council. category Flint, a project progress for providers. Rwch roi sy'r llwyfan i Ceri McLeod a Ceri Cartwright yn cynrychioli cyngor Sir Flint. Y mae'n yn dod, da iawn nhw. Jerry's and two Kerry's on the stage here this afternoon. Well, there we are. Well done, Kerry and uh, Kerry from Fincher Council. Dion, who Rockham Reduyat in the Nua, Rockham Reduyat Hevid, Irsevadliad, Sidical Camaraduyat Echel, Anagasted Layatama, Care Without Compromise. Where are you, Care Without Compromise? Come on up. John Doyle and Tony Doyle. Either been to Stuskriv or the Orthogwini dog. Here they are. Dion Hoof. Well done, John and Tony. Congratulations. Here they are, representing Care Without Compromise. I've got to say, some sharp ties there from uh, John and Tony as well. Well done. 
Now then, we've reached our penultimate uh, category, uh, innovative and creative solutions, sharing your experiences. Now, in this category, we were looking for examples of new ways of working being tested and examples of creativity, improving well-being, evidence of how practice has been changed because existing methods are not working as expected, okay? And uh, evidence also of supporting people who receive care and support to achieve what matters to them. Who are the finalists? Well, I'll tell you. Our finalists in this category are Rhonda Canontav County Borough Council with their Stay Well at Home project and Munmisha County Council with their My Mates project. And we're going to have a look at some films now and gives us a taste of both projects, ladies and gentlemen. The project is called Stay Well at Home. It's a partnership project between Cumtaf University Health Board, Merthyr Tidville, uh, County Borough Council and Ron the Cannon Taff, County Borough Council. The partnership is also between the third sector, so at Age Connect and Care and Repair, which can also provide services to help discharge people home from hospital. We established multidisciplinary teams and they work to assess people who come into hospital to see if we can discharge them earlier from hospital with a range of community responses that we also developed. They wanted me to come into hospital with a broken ankle, but I didn't want to stay. I needed to be at home because my husband's ill. So they got in touch with Stay Well at Home. They brought them down to A&E, and then if it wasn't for the girls, I wouldn't have got home that evening. If they need medication, we can do that at home. If they need IV antibiotics, the nurses at home can provide that service. And we've got um, home care at home too. If it hadn't been for them, I would have had to stay in hospital, well, I should, most probably for about three weeks. We've assessed over 2,000 people in the first year, and 80% of those people have gone home within 24 hours. They really appreciate the service, which we're really proud of. Project name is My Mates and we work with people who have a learning disability and we provide opportunities for socials, for friendships, for relationships and also we provide uh, workshops and just access to information. We go out and meet um, friends and have fun and stuff like that. We do go on some good trips out. Oh yes we, we do. do. Awesome they are. Oh yeah. Awesome mm. days. We're trying to provide people with some social capital, some friendships, some unpaid friendships, access to support that doesn't come from a paid group. We met at, at, at my mates and we've uh, been together ever since. Self-esteem has grown, confidence has grown, people are challenging. Sometimes it's the first time people have actually used their voice to tell people you know, what their choices are. I love friends and I like my food. Absolutely so. We're focusing on people's ability and not their disability. And that's the thing that makes me feel the most proud. Oh, it can make us happy and so proud. Yes, uh, 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 I go away with me Yeah, thanks, John. You know, we're meeting some inspiring people um, in the hall here today. We're hearing inspiring stories on the stage, but we're also getting inspiration from these films, I think, as well. So uh, thank you to everybody. Some of them aren't here today, perhaps, so thanks to everybody who's taken part in these films. It gives us an insight into the work of the projects. It also reminds us what a lovely summer we've just had as well, so that you see all the lovely sunshine. Anyway, well done. Let's find out what the judges thought of these projects. Let's hear from Jerry now then. Um, if we're going to meet and overcome the challenges we're going to face in social care, early years and childcare over the next few years, we're going to have to find new ways of doing things, more innovation uh, and new ideas about how things should be done. As is often said these days, we can't carry on doing the same things in the same way. This category was all about trying to unearth some innovative projects and this turned out to be the most popular with more than 20 entries, which is excellent news. Um, and the judges were certainly not disappointed by the two finalists we have here today. Um, 
To describe the Stay Well at Home project, you might have got a sense of our judges' vocabulary. The judges used the technical description of wow. <laughs> they felt they'd meticulously planned the project from the beginning, broken down silos and removed all barriers. The collaboration had gone into planning and setting up the project was wonderful. <clears throat> they even had 13 task and finish groups at one point. Speaking to a 97-year-old man really brought home the value of the project to the judges. He'd been admitted to hospital with an acute infection. And after two weeks, he decided he was ready to go home. And actually, he got his wish by the end of that day. Normally, we know, and the stories we hear from our media friends are that this, you know, takes a long time. But this project actually shows it can be done, and can be done effectively and safely. It was all down to the collaboration between the different organisations. The judges wanted to make it clear that while there may be similar schemes around Wales, stay well at home seems to go much further. Judges thought Monmouthshire County Council's My Mates project was a great example of thinking outside the box. It had given many people with a learning disability involved in the project a thoroughly new experience and equip them with useful skills. Some of them had never been to Cardiff before, it's novel, and had never previously had the chance to pick out their own clothes and get dressed up. By being part of my mates, they'd learned about safe cyber use, safe texting, and the use of smartphones and photos. Everyone was so enthusiastic about this project and the, the people with learning disability, their parents and staff, and so many positive stories and experiences. This was a really tough one to call. Right, a tough one to call. So what was the call? Now for the big moment, who's gonna be the winner? Well, the person with the answer is Albert Heaney. Albert is Director of Social Services and Integration at the Welsh Government. Welcome, Albert, onto the stage, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome right to Mara River. Pranhamdar, what a wonderful afternoon, and two exceptional finalists. And the winner for the accolade goes to Mummyshire County Council. <laughs> Well done. Well done, Monmouthshire County Council's My Mates Projects. Welcome Shelley Walton and Sarah Sieben, please, on stage to receive the accolade from the Minister. Here they come. Well done, both of you. Well done to the project and the team. celebrating on stage with us this afternoon and I think those celebrations will continue well into the afternoon. Well done both of you and all of you on that project. Now then, um, let's give a warm round of applause also to our highly commended finalists in this competition. Rhonda Canantav Borough Council and they're represented by Councillor Geraint Hopkins and Louisa Bridgman. Come on stage please to receive your certificate from the Minister. Well done. Congratulations to Geraint and Louisa and Honda Kanatav for the council. Right then, ladies and gentlemen, you've been a great audience, by the way, fantastic. <laughs> oh, 
There's always one. <laughs> There's always one. <laughs> now then, in the category, Ola uh, Prenhauma. Um, yeah, my pronoun and there we Ben question an an for this. On not quite. Tim koi to the girlfriend eto. A category hon yw gwell kaliniade drwy dysgu a gweithio gyda ngiddydd. A noddir hon gan Deloitte, felly diwch yn fawr i o'n i chi am eich cefnogaeth. Ac yn y categori hon, oedd y beniad yn chwilio am enghreifftiau o fodderneiddio gwerth gweithlu ar draws ffiniau sefydliadol a hynny er mwyn gwella canlyniadau. Dysgu neu hyfforddiant ar draws ffiniau proffesiynol sydd wedi arwain at wasanaethau gwahanol yn cydweithio, yn effeithiol, yn y gymuned a gofal a chymorth gwell a mwy cynaladwy o herwydd gweithio cymunedol. Right, pwysi yn y categori yma. Tri sefydliad yn y rhwng derfynol. Cymdeithas gwasanaethau gwirfoddol Sir Benfro ar gyfer i prosiect nhw i helpu bobl hun i fyw yn annibynnol yn eu cartref i hynau. Cyngor bwrdeisaf Sir Ol Conwy ar gyfer i prosiect nhw i leihau nifer y plant sy'n cael eu canfanteisio'n rhywiol. A gwasanaeth dydd Sant Ioan cyngor abertawe ar gyfer i menter gardd gymunedol. Tri wedi cyrraedd y rhwng derfynol. Diolch chi'n ei gael blas o'r tri ohonyn nhw'n awr drwy wylio'r ffilmiau canlynol. Diolch. Our programme of work is the Pembrokeshire Prevention's Programme Board. It's about a group of uh, people coming together from the third sector, from public health, from the health board, from local authority, to develop a shared vision and shared approach to preventions in Pembrokeshire. We've developed a number of third sector-led activities, including Pivot, Caring Communities Innovations Grant, the Active and Connected Communities Programme, and most recently, the Pembrokeshire Time Bank Network. The benefits that we've seen already is that it mobilises people within their communities to come together. People have benefited in terms of their self-esteem, in terms of their confidence and their ability to take the lead in their own lives. They give me lots of valid advice, they help set up lots of things within my constitution and our governance and our training and they're constant providers of support within Pembrokeshire, within the voluntary sector and people that need care and provide care and they link it all together so I can't speak highly enough of them. I think we've all got a real sense that if we work together we can achieve effective change and we can maintain that change and I think we can see that the building blocks that we've put in place already are going to continue to grow. Come, I recognise that there was an increasing risk of sexual exploitation for our young people and the social workers within Conway were keen to do something about that. I'm under social services and I was like misbehaving in school and misusing drugs and not staying safe on the internet. So like my social worker can like put me on the course here and it has helped a lot. They started like making me see sense and stuff about what I was doing and like showed me the right way because I was going down a really bad path. I think the opportunity to share training allows a greater network and a greater understanding of people's jobs roles. I came here and then started obviously learning a lot more of drugs and like sexual harassment and stuff online like grooming and that. And I'm glad I came because I, I needed to know what I did learn. I think what we're most proud of is the collaborative working with the police, with the schools, with the youth service. We meet on a monthly basis at the forum to share that soft intel. It's changed me and my family at home as well because they weren't happy about what I was doing either. They were like very concerned and worried about me. The project was based on the fact that there was no funding. The future will be that there is still no funding. But if you look around you, there are huge skills in staff teams and there are resources here. So we're going to continue to do it and we hope that others will do it as well. I know like how to stay safe on the internet now. I avoid like any danger because of them. I'm like living with my nan and I'm happy, you know, with my family and my family are happy. We're St John's Day Service, so we look after older people living with complex needs who come and spend the day with us. That could be for giving carers respite or people with complex needs. Alongside that, we run a community garden and a community transport scheme. We have service users that are living with dementia 
they actually come out here regularly to look at the fish because the fish have got movement and that sort of thing that they just love to just stand there and just watch really. Community engagement's really important because we have strong links to our local community and we're able to support an awful lot more people than we would have if we were just a traditional day service. I'm a community volunteer here and it's been so good for myself. It's just a wonderful place where people love to come and would be completely lost without this place. It is the heart of the community. I lost my confidence before I came here. I'd never, I didn't go outside the door for four months. And uh, oh, I think it's coming back now. It's a nice place to come to. I look forward to it every Thursday. We've completely changed from quite a traditional model of care to something that I don't think anyone else is really doing. And we've managed to, to make it a success. Well, we're getting some uh, powerful stories this afternoon, aren't we? And I don't know about you, but I feel quite privileged to just see what's happening in different parts of Wales and see some of these projects here today. So well done, all of you. But what did you, that's what I think, but what did the adjudicators think, Jerry? Um, Mae gweithio ar y cyd yn holl bwysig i Obal Cymdeit Asl Cymru. Dyn ni'n gallu wneud i'n byd a fenn yn unen am y hwnna'n wir o bob gwasanaeth. Felly yr oedd bleser mawr, wel, bod y categori hwn wedi denu mwy na ugen o geisiadau. Roedd y berniad yn falch i weld bod prosiect Sir Fembro yn cael ei arwain gan y trydydd sector, fel i'n dweud o blaen, dyn ni'n mynd i cael gymaint o geisiadau o'r trydydd sector yn y sector breifed, a felly oedd hwn yn bleser. Roedd yn nhw'n yn brosiect oedd wedi gweld gwahaniaeth pendant i fod y pobl yn y sir. Uh, trwy herio i gilydd gan uh, ddefnyddu arian mewn ffordd gwahanol, um, roedd y cyfan wedi dod at i gilydd i greu pecyn cynhwys fawr a oedd yn ysgogi meddwl gyda llawer o siantaethau yn dod at i gilydd i ganolbwyntio ar yr unigolyn. Ac yn bwysig, roedd gan ein digon o enghreifftiau da iawn o hyn a gyflawnwyd. Yng Nghonwy, y prosiect i, I, I lehau camfanteisio rhywiol yn ystod plentyndod oedd y barneriaeth uh, aml a siantaethol mwyaf effeithiol roedd y beirniad, beirniad erioed wedi gweld, felly eto safon uchel iawn. Erna chafodd uh, arian ychwanegol uh, i wario ar y prosiect oedd wedi arwain at ganlyniadau uh, mesuradwy uh, a dibynwyd a oedd yn cael uh, eu cefnogi gan dystiolaeth. Cafodd, cyfar, uh, cafodd cyfarfod gyda chwech o ferched a fi trwy'r rhaglen effaith dwys ar y beirniad, ac oedd nhw wedi cael, oedd wedi cael effaith cryf. Um, fe helpodd y beirniad i, I weld y canlyniadau go iawn, gan wneud argraff ar y beirniad bod effaith mor bositif wedi wneud ar y bobl sy'n agored i, 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 I niwed. Yn abetawe, daeth gwasanaeth dydd St. Ioan, a'r cyngor ynghyd a nifer o wahanol sefydliadau gan gynnwys ar uh, yr eglwys leol. I helpu bobl i rannu sgiliau a ffurfio perthynas trwy bosiaeth gardd, uh, gardd gymunedol. Roedd y brwd rydedd a uh, ngerddol uh, ac ymagwedd ysbryd yn uh, 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 gynolfan wedi gwneud argraff arbennig ar y beirniad, eto'n dangos pwysigrydd unigolion yn arwain gwasanaethau. Uh, roedd yn tefyd yn, uh, yn hoffi'r ffaith bod llawer o rhyngweithio rhwng pobl uh, o wahanol o drannau uh, uh, i weld yn bositif. Ar y cyfan, teimlad berniad ei fod yn gynllun uh, sydd wedi newid bywodau bobl mewn ffordd positif. Well, Ian Howes, sy'n cynrychioli noddwr y categori yma Deloitte, sy'n mynd i ddweud ni pwy sy wedi ennill y gystadleuaeth. Felly, croeso cynnes iawn, Ian Howes i'r llwyfan ysgolwch chi'n dda. Nodwyr y gystadleuaeth yma yw Deloitte. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, three fantastic projects, but there has to be one winner. And the winner of the Better Outcomes by Learning and Working Together category is 
Conwy, County <laughs> Borough Council. Diane Conway, one of the Ghana, one of the Gasai, and this is the category Kangor for Distrib Ciro Conway, and another Suivan. He's ever been a Guabar, Angela Longman, and Sarah King. Christ, I'm out of the room. Very warm welcome. Well done. I must say, the minister here is a, a dab hand at arranging people for a photo, isn't he? He's doing a <laughs> really good job at that. Well done. Right. Rwch groes o'r cynnes i'r ddau ymgeisydd aras sy wedi derbyn cymeradwyaeth uchel wrth y beirniaid. Yn gyntaf, cymdeithas gwasanaethau gwirfoddol Sir Benfro yn cael eu cynrychioli gan Chris Harrison and Sue Leonard. Chris, Sue, come up. Nice to see you. Come on. Chris and Sue from Pembrokeshire Association of Voluntary Services. Well done. Diane Songwork added in who? And this is the Isle of Gaisid, in the Camera de Ia Tichel. Croeso, Cymdeithas Dydd, Sant Ioan, a Chyngor Abertawe, Amanda Gullivan a Janet Jones. <laughs> Here they are from the St John's Day Service in Swansea Council. Coming on stage. Coming right on the back of the hall. Takes a bit of time. Well done. Well done, Annie. It's been, a, it's been a great afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and I'm sure you'll all agree that we've seen and we've heard some, well, fantastic projects uh, this afternoon, and that's, that's good. Excellent news for social work, social care, and early years and childcare in Wales. I asked you to do this right at the beginning of the afternoon. We're going to ask you to do it again. Give yourselves a big round of applause for all your great work, all of you, <laughs> and reaching the accolades. 2018 and that's for the people here in the hall but it's also for the people who aren't here today people who are helping various projects and people who are benefiting from various projects right across Wales on behalf of Social Care Wales I'd like to thank the Minister for being uh, with us today and handing out all the awards and certificates and smiling beautifully for the cameraman <laughs> Also for our guest speaker, Richard McCann. Thank you very much to Richard. Thanks to Arwell, Arwell Ellis Owen, Chair of Social Care Wales and the judging panel, and our sponsors for their generous backing, and the judges who gave up so much of their time. Um, Jerry, for his help here this afternoon on behalf of the judges. The String Quartet, the Cambria St String Quartet. On a personal note, just Jochen Vauriaun, thank you for asking me to be here. It's been an amazing afternoon. It's really inspiring. Your stories have been quite something. They stay with, with me for a, for a long, long time. Good luck to all of you with all of your work, wherever you are. It matters. It's important to a lot of people. 
Diolch yn fawr iawn i chi gyd. Um, diolch yn fawr. Yeah, of course, Jerry was stepping in at the last minute, wasn't he? Well, well done him um, assisting me in presenting the ceremony and giving us the judge's perspective. Diolch yn fawr iawn, Jerry. Thanks to you all for attending today's celebration and all that's best about social work, social care, and early years and childcare here in Wales. We hope you've enjoyed, hope you've enjoyed the occasion. Give us your feedback, complete the forms on your table, let us know what you thought about today's ceremony. And as Arwell said, right at the beginning of this afternoon, this is the first time for Social Care Wales to take responsibility for the accolades. I'm sure it's just the beginning of a new dawn for the awards, and they're sure to go from strength to strength, ladies and gentlemen, if today is anything to go by. So, so, it might be well worth each and every one of you thinking about next year. Okay, what are you going to do next year? What are you going to put in next year, right? Um, what could your entry be next year? Go on, go for it. Tell other people about it. Go on Twitter, tell them you've had a great time, and put your projects in. Let's get some recognition, and let's some, get some acknowledgement for all the work you're doing, okay? So well done, all of you. Um, now then, just in case you haven't had enough photos this afternoon, okay, there'll be a chance to continue celebrating and chatting about this afternoon, um, and to get your photos taken if you go to the Ferrier Hall, which is just off the Marble Hall there, okay? Our professional photographer, he'll be there to take more pictures with you. Well, that's it, folks. Um, it's been a great afternoon. Have a safe journey home.